everyone. Welcome to the Newverton Level 1 training. I'm Abby, Field Application Engineer of Newverton. Today, I'm going to introduce the timer function of our new micro M031 and M032 series. In this section, we'll tell you what timer is, what features and functions it has, We'll also go through the block diagram to let you know better about timer. So, what is timer? How can we use timer? Basically, timer is used to count. You can use timer to count time or events. For example, you can use a timer to periodically trigger an interrupt every five minutes. You can use a timer to count the time between two events. And you can also count number of events by a timer. The timer we provide in new micro M031 and M032 series has below features. There are four sets of timers in our microcontroller. Each timer is 32-bit, which contains a 8-bit prescale and a 24-bit up counter. It has four operation modes of counting, which are one shot, periodic, toggle out, and continuous counting. We'll talk more about these operation modes later. Timer supports event counting and event capturing. It can also trigger PWM, ADC, and PDMA internally when time is up. Timer can wake up microcontroller from idle mode or power down mode. We'll focus on M031 and M032 series today. However, we would like to share one additional timer feature of our M480 series. M480 has similar timer features with M031 and M032. But M480 supports four more sets 16-bit PWM counter, which could be used for PWM to count. This is a simplified block diagram of timer. It shows how the timer works briefly. Before getting a timer to work, you have to give it a clock source to tell it what tempo it will use to count. The clock source of each timer could be set individually. You can choose either an internal clock or an external clock as the clock source of a timer. The prescaler will adjust the frequency for the counter. Then the counter starts to count up by the given frequency. When the value of the counter reaches the value set in the comparator, it will set the flag. Then the flag will trigger a wake up, an interrupt, or an internal signal by its register setting. The value of the counter can be reset by an internal or an external event. The value of the counter can also be loaded to a data register for query. The flag can also be set by the events in order to trigger corresponding actions. By this design, you can set different actions by your requirement, either when time is up or when there are events detected. As we mentioned before, we have to set the clock source for each timer. Here shows all the clock source we can use for a timer. There are six clock source for M031 and M032. HIRC and LIRC are high-speed and low-speed internal clocks. HXT and LXT are high-speed and low-speed external clocks. PCLK1 is the peripheral clock. TM0 to TM3 are the input pins for external clocks. You can set the clock source of each timer individually by setting the register TMRXSEL. Besides, 
You can enable the clock of a timer by setting the register TMRXCKEN. Therefore, after selecting the clock source and enabling the clock, the clock of the timer starts to work, which means that the clock is ready to be used by the timer. We have seen a simplified block diagram before. Now, this is the complete block diagram of M031 and M032 series timer. This block diagram could be divided into two parts. One part is the timer counting mode. The other part is the event counting mode. For the timer counting mode, first of all, we have to set the clock source. Except for using the clock source embedded in M031 and M032 series, we provide a way to use external clock source from TM0 to TM3 pins. There is a prescale for adjusting the frequency of the counter. We'll also set the value of the comparator as the timeout value. When the counter counts to the value set in the comparator, the TIF flag will be raised. When TIF flag is raised, if the register INTEN is enabled, which means the interrupt is enabled, it will trigger an interrupt. If the register WKEN is enabled, which means the wake up is enabled, the TWKF flag will be raised and then trigger a wake up or an interrupt. For the event counting mode, timer supports event counting and event capturing. Event could be input from timer external pins TM0 EXT to TM3 EXT, or it could be input from ACMP or LIRC. The input event signal could be debounced by the debounce circuit. Besides, the event could be said to be triggered by raising age, falling age, or both raising and falling ages. Timer can count the number of events or count the time between events. An event can either reset the counter or load the value of the counter to a data register. Timer can also trigger actions by events. Like the timer counting mode, the actions could be wake up or interrupt. We are going to show you how to set up a basic timer by the timeout period calculation formula. For a basic timer, except for a clock source, you have to set registers for both prescale and comparator. You can get the values of prescale and comparator by the calculation formula. For example, if you use a clock source with 12 MHz and want to set up a timeout period as 6 seconds, by the formula, the values of prescale and comparator would be 72 and 1 million. After getting the values, you can set registers of the timer as below. The example codes here are the settings of timer 0. The first line is to set up the clock source of timer 0. Here, we use HXT, high speed external clock, as the clock source. The second line is to enable the clock of timer 0. Then, the following two lines are to set registers, set prescale and comparator by the values we got from the formula, which are 72 for prescale and 1 million for a comparator. At last, we call timer start function to start the counting of timer 0. Now, we have known how to set up a timer for the basic counting. However, timer can do more than the basic counting. Besides timer counting, it can also do event counting, external capture, and external reset counter. For the event counting, it can count how many events happened. For the external capture, it can capture the time between two events. 
For the external reset counter, it can reset the counter when there is an age transition detected. When we are using timer counting function, there are four operation modes to choose. They are one shot, periodic, toggle out, and continuous count. Let's take comparator as 100 to explain these modes. For one shot mode, as the name suggests, when the counter value reaches 100, the timer triggers an interrupt and stop counting. For a periodic mode, it is similar with one-shot mode. It will trigger an interrupt when the counter value reaches 100 as well. In addition, it will reset the counter and repeat the counting periodically. For toggle out mode, it is similar with periodic mode. However, when the counter value reaches 100, it will toggle the signal of ping TM0 to TM3. It will also reset the counter and repeat the counting. Therefore, for toggle out mode, it will output a toggled waveform through ping TM0 to TM3. For a continuous count mode, when the value reaches 100, it will trigger an interrupt, but it won't reset the counter. The counter will keep counting until it is overflow. In this mode, you can change the value of comparator dynamically without stopping the timer. These are the counting modes we provide for timer function. You can choose what to use by your requirement. You can use the API provided by our BSP to set the counting mode of a timer. The API is timer open. You can set the counting mode and frequency of a timer by this API. It will set related registers automatically by given parameters. For example, in the line below, we set timer 0 in periodic mode and the frequency is 1 Hz. When the value of the counter reaches the value of the comparator, an interrupt will be triggered. However, you have to enable this behavior by calling timer enable interrupt function. After you enable the interrupt of a timer, an interrupt will then be triggered when timeout. The API timer start is used to start the counting of a timer. After it is called, the timer starts to count up. Timer interrupt could be triggered by timeout or event capture. You may implement your own interrupt handling functions by your requirements. Besides, for the M031 and M032 series, timer interrupt can be used to internally trigger other peripherals, for example, PWM, ADC, and the PDMA. For M480 series, the interrupt can even internally trigger the DAC function. Above is the introduction of timer. Thanks for watching. You could subscribe our channel for more information. Besides, Please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions.